Uh, hey everyone, welcome to another polyhedron demo. Uh, in our last demo, we showed off um, our 3D terrain system and a lot of our game table features. Uh, now I'm going to show you um, some work we've done on themes and our chat log features. Okay, so first for themes, we have three different themes here. Uh, there's the 20th century theme, uh, and this one you can see here. <coughs> Uh, the tooltip when I mouse over. Now, this is inspired by like the old Apple Macintosh interfaces, you know, from the late 80s, um, early 90s. Uh, we have a cool sci fi theme. This one's probably my favorite. Uh, this is sort of inspired by the interface for the game Cogmind. Uh, has sort of a nice futuristic matrixy look. And the last one here is Retro Fantasy. Uh, and this one's inspired by um, the interface from Heroes of My Magic 2, an old, uh, an old 90s strategy game. Uh, so those are cool. Right now we have the themes only uh, integrated for tooltips and context menus. So you can also see here, um, we have this for the context menu. Um, but eventually we'll have the themes for uh, almost all the application that you see when you're actually playing the game. Um, Cool. Uh, I'd also like to show the chat log here. We have a lot of really interesting features. So obviously you can go in the chat log and you can just type in, hello. Uh, you can type in whatever you want, send messages to people. The other cool thing is you can change your, um, <clears throat> you can change your alias here to whatever you want. And uh, so this is, this is really easy for, you know, the, the GM to play different uh, NPCs and change, you know, change their alias. Players can use it too. It's a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing you can do is you can uh, obviously whisper to other players. So um, this system I think is uh, better than um, is better than a lot of uh, other virtual tabletops where you have to do a you know, slash W and type out the username because here there's no, there's really no chance for error. There's no chance you'd accidentally send something public um, that you, you intended to be private. Uh, and you can, of course, you can do a group whisper as well, uh, whispering to multiple people. Um, and you can also hide whisper recipients. So um, you normally you can mouse over uh, mouse over a whispered message and you can see who it's visible to. Um, if you send the message, you can always see who it's visible to. Um, and if you are not hiding the recipients, then the recipients can also see everyone's visible to. But if you receive a message and the recipients were hidden, you can see who sent it, of course, but you can only see that it's a whisper and you don't know who else it's sent to. So that's very useful for, um, for example, the GM to send everybody a message saying, um, oh, you know, you detected this as an illusion, you're receiving a telepathic message, something like that that's determined whether, like, which players failed the saving throw, which players succeeded. Uh, you can really easily, you know, privately send a message to, you know, half of your players, and they won't know necessarily that um, no other player is receiving that message. Um, another cool thing, feature we have uh, is a face down, the ability to type things face down. So this is useful for a lot of things. Uh, basically what it is, is you, I could say, hello there, uh, I sent a face down message, everybody sees it, um, and they don't know what it is until they click on it to peek. Uh, you click on it to peek, it's updated, and now you see this little tooltip here indicates uh, that I have peeked at the message. Um, and uh, you're probably wondering why it says Bleezy has peeked at this message and not Calculon, that's because Calculon is my alias but my actual username is Bleezy, and because you're constantly changing your aliases, um, all of these tooltips are based off of your actual username, so people know which player has actually done this action. So, um, yeah, so now the other players will still see the message that says, um, Calculus type something face down, and when they mouse over it, they'll see Bleezy has peeked at this message, but I'm the only person who actually, only the players who have actually peeked at it see the actual contents of the message. So this is useful for a lot of things. Um, for example, if you're playing a game of Frostgrave, like we have set up here, you might cast um, Illusionary Soldier, you might number your troops or something like that, and you could say face down at the beginning of the game, um, you know, uh, 
marksman number one is an illusion. Uh, you send this message face down so that everyone will know, okay, you've already determined which of your guys is an illusion. And then, you know, whenever that, that illusionary fighter takes damage, you know, you could then reveal it. And everyone would say, oh, yeah, he, he, you know, he noted at the beginning of the game that this token was an illusion. So that's almost like, you know, putting a little sticker on the bottom of your miniature or something like that. Um, it's a really you know easy way to sort of or it's kind of equivalent to like writing a secret in an envelope and putting it out there. Everyone knows you haven't touched it. You haven't edited it. Um, so it's a really useful thing. Um, the other the other cool thing is, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously we have the different die roll techniques that you can do. You can roll, roll 1d20. You can roll you know, 3d6, that sort of thing. And you can see the individual results. And if you're playing, like if you're playing 5th edition D&D and, uh, you know, your character, your character drops down to, um, your character drops down to zero hit points after making death saving throws, that's actually a great, a great target to do face down because, um, you know, you don't want the other players to see, uh, you don't want the other players to see what you're actually rolling. Um, uh, let me just do it quickly right here. Uh, yeah, so so you don't have to just type messages face down. You could also do um, die rolls face down, that sort of thing, and you can reveal it. Uh, and then when you mouse over, you see the actual rolls. Uh, you see who's face down, who peeked at it. So this is this is great for things like death saving throws because you don't want the other players to see what you're actually rolling, um, and you might not actually want the player them themselves to see what they're rolling. In this case, it might be useful to roll face down, have only the, the GM peek at it, and if they see, oh, you got a natural 20, oh, so now you come back with one hit point, or um, or something like that, uh, then they can narrate that to you, but you might, yourself might not want to peek until uh, you've actually been revived, because you know, you're trying to maintain a good poker face, you're trying to uh, be a good role player and not reveal that you know a secret, uh, especially if you have like a video chat or a voice chat or something like that running. Um, you don't want to reveal a secret inadvertently to the other players. So yeah, um, you know, illusionary soldiers, death saving throws, those are all great candidates for things to roll face down. And, you know, the great thing about these uh, messages, they're all composable. So you can whisper something face down to two people with hidden whisper recipients. You can toggle any of these features you want. Uh, you can do it for chat messages, for tables. So if I'm going to do something like this, um, you know, roll on this this aggregated treasure table. Uh, I could do that as a whisper to somebody. I could do that face down. Um, uh, let me just try that. Yep. So here's a set a face down message. It tells you the visibility here in the tooltip. It tells you it's face down. I click the peak. Uh, it reveals it reveals the result. It tells me I peeked at the message. So all all of these different chat items are composable. So. Uh, this is I mean, it's really useful for you know for games like Frostgrave. It's also useful for especially useful for role playing games. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of cool features with our chat log that you know you won't find on Roll Twenty or similar platforms. Um, we also have good chat log performance because we have pagination. As you scroll up, um, it loads you know the previous pages of the chat log. Um, so that's cool. So yeah, you, you can have a chat log you know that's um, you know, thousands of entries, and it's not going to give you a big lag when you're loading up a scene, and uh, you can still scroll up and, and search the early history if you want. Uh, yep, yeah, so thanks for watching. We'll have more demos in the future.